Hi, I'm Stephanie Hoffman, and on this episode of Metal America, we're at Philly Shipyard Inc., where they build training ships for future merchant marines. I'm Stephanie Hoffman, and I've been in the welding industry for more than 20 years, working as a welder, fabricator, instructor, and now with the American Welding Society. Where I get to travel the country meeting people who are building incredible things while introducing the next generation to careers in welding and metal fabrication. Today I'm here with Matt Cassidy. He's one of the communication specialists here at Philly Shipyard Inc. Matt, what are we going to be seeing today? Well, we'll start right here at the beginning of the prefabrication shop. Um, where the steel comes in, we'll go down large panel line, we'll see a few of the other shops, a few different, uh, different types of welding activities, okay. um, and by the end we should be seeing something that resembles more of a section. How many people work here then? We have about a thousand right now, and okay. we're hoping to get up to between 1,200 and 1,400. And out of those thousand plus people working here, how many are welders? Yeah, about 250, but uh, we're still looking to add plenty more. All right, Matt, so what are we going to get to go look at first? Well, we'll start here on large panel line where the steel actually starts its trip around the entire prefabrication shop, so we can start that right here. We're here at the beginning of the prefabrication line at the large panel shop. Okay. So the steel's coming in, it's going to get picked up by this large magnetic crane, and uh, then the welding will begin. All right, so we're going to go see some welding next time. Yep, a couple different kinds of welding. All right, awesome. Let's go check it out. Yep. Matt, it looks like you brought me to a massive sub arc machine. What is this thing running at, like a, a thousand amps? Actually, it's a two-wire system and up to a thousand on each. That's incredible. So this thing is able to do a single pass, basically 2,000 amps on these pieces of plate. Right, right. This is actually where the initial welds are done on every ship. Uh, 2,000 amps on just about every piece of metal that Pretty comes much. through this shipyard. Yeah, yep. That, think about that. 2,000 amps on some of these pieces of material. At home, you might be using a welder and maybe the max amperage you'll ever run is like 220, maybe 80 amps even on some stick rods. This is incredible. Yeah, definitely. All right, so what are we going to see next? We're going to move down, uh, still on large panel, but okay. we'll see some different kinds of welds. All right, cool. Yeah. It looks like we're at another big kind of mechanized welding station. What goes on here? This is the end of the large panel line, so we made it. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually have to pass this over to one of our apprentices, Christian Delp, who okay. can probably go a little bit more in depth on this machine. Okay. So Christian, they tell me you know everything there is to know about this piece of equipment. What is it that makes it so special? So this is a double-sided welder that okay. has four welders for each wire. Okay. And there's two on each side. So simultaneously welding at the same time. How long did it take to complete one of these tasks? About 10 to 20 minutes. That's pretty intense. So how long have you been working here? About eight months. Eight months, so are you like in an apprenticeship program? Yeah, I started when I was uh, 18. Okay. And I'm um, working learning different machines as I go. All right. I'm on this one right now. So what made you get into welding? Uh, I was in high school okay. and my mom showed me. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, looks pretty fun. <laughs> so you've been sticking with it. You think, yeah. you're, you think you think you're found your niche, huh? I think so. That's awesome. Thank you so much for talking to me today, Christian. Thank you. We have manual welding going on over here. They're adding some structural components okay. to the large panels that were profiled that we just saw before. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is all manual right here. Okay, so what's next in this journey? Next we'll go to Double Bottom Line and uh, a few other shops. So we're here in Double Bottom Line shop and we are taking a look at some uh, structures, some walls that are going up and really uh, uh, section is kind of in the process of coming together here. That's what we call them. Sections come together to become blocks and okay. the blocks come together to make the ship. That's incredible. Yeah, now it's, it's really starting to look like something. Yeah. It's still amazing that this thing is eventually going to float in the ocean one It's day. crazy how heavy it is and it actually floats. Yeah, you, you said before it's how many tons? Yeah, blocks can get up to 600 tons. 
Well, this is super awesome. What's next for us? Yeah, so we're going to head to a few more shops, uh, probably Web and Bulkhead, but uh, the big one will be Curve Panel. Here we are at the pin jig table. We have some curved panels that are uh, being, uh, they're having some uh, structure pieces welded on. And okay. this actually is the exterior of the ship right here. This will have some water contact on the outside. So a lot of the other parts we've seen being erected weren't really necessarily coming in contact with water. Right, so there's a lot of the, uh, the pieces that we see that might be interior uh -huh. or higher up on the ship. This is actually a piece that will be floating, touching the, uh, touching the water. I couldn't help but notice you up here uh, working away inside this this is a hole, right? Uh, we call it a pocket. Okay, inside this pocket. Yeah. What kind of welding are you uh, doing in here? Um, just like fillet, fillet oh, welds. Okay, how long have you been welding for? Three months. Now, yeah. when you were kind of trying to figure out what you wanted to do as a career and you thought welding, did you ever think you were going to be building ships? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> Pretty awesome stuff. You probably get to go home and, and be like, yo, look what I just made. It's so cool. Honestly, like it doesn't even feel like work. Yeah. You know, like I look forward to going to work every day. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean I went from having an office job to standing and doing yeah. manual Whole new labor. Set of skills, right? So um, if I can do it, I think anyone could do it, yeah. honestly. Absolutely. I mean I, you got another another lady over here on the other side. Yeah. We've got two women working here, and it just goes to show you don't have to be a 250-pound burly man to do this kind of work. We need more women. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we got, got plenty of cranes around here to do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Lily, thanks so much for talking to me. Yeah, no problem. All right, I'll get out of your hair now. All right, nice to meet you. See ya. This is a dry dock, correct? Correct. We're in the building dry dock uh, here at Philly Shipyard. We have two of them. Uh, the other one is more for outfitting. So once the ship gets to a, uh, a level where it can actually float, we'll float yeah. the dock and move it over into the other one to finish all the interior stuff. So how long does it take to get all the water in here and then get it all out? Yeah, a few hours to come in and out. And the thing down, the, down there that kind of works is the gate system. It's called a caisson. And um, essentially, it pumps water in and out uh, instead of just letting the dock flood. Uh, rapidly. So Matt, once you get the school of fish out of here, I heard that you actually have a, a school, so to speak, of your own here at the Philly Shipyard. Can we go check that out? We do. We'll go over to the training academy. Maybe you can meet some of our apprentices and uh, test your skills first then. All right. Sounds good. Let's go over there. We're at the Training Academy. Um, this is where our apprenticeship program takes place, and we have actually new apprentices right behind us. They started on That's awesome. uh, yeah three days ago. Um, wow. So yeah, so we're trying to get three to four cohorts a year of uh, 15 to 20, maybe even more uh, students um, per cohort. And, oh wow. um, Yeah, it's a three-year program. So you're looking at 45 to 60 new welding employees coming through this program every exactly. year. Exactly. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Basically, these people are, they can come with all different types of skill levels and backgrounds and you guys are going to be training them on site for what you guys need out in the field. Sure, yeah, you just have to have a, a GED or high school diploma and be over 18 and pass a mechanical aptitude test and uh, yeah, we have people that start at 18 or 40 years old. Wow, that's amazing because a lot of times people's biggest hang up with getting into any, either it's a, a career change or just getting into the field for the first time out of high school and it's where do I get the money to go to school? How do I, you know, work a job and get training at the same time? Well, there are companies like this one out there that there is job training and, you know, you're going to be able to leave here with a great job working right. at a cool place like this. Exactly. <laughs> so you learn while you earn, you're making money, you're not going into debt, and yeah. you already have a job lined up. Yeah, again. that's awesome. Yeah. You said these people are on day four, yeah. this group here. Yeah. Day four, they're already outside cutting. Is that, that, that's not really typical for a lot of apprenticeship programs. A lot of times a lot of, a lot of book work and just kind of getting acquainted, safety stuff, but you guys really put them hands on right away. Right, yeah, so they're out here, they're learning different types of welding, flux core, some <laughs> stick welding, um, and yeah, on day four. And oxy fuel cutting outside. Oxy fuel cutting outside, exactly. <laughs> and then in 12 weeks, they're over there 
actually welding on these ships. Right, and that's what I think is the biggest selling point about our apprenticeship program is that you're learning, but you're also in the actual workspace and um, seeing things happen. Yeah, it's, and it's a lot different to get that type of experience versus just in a schoolhouse setting, you're limited on problem solving, teamwork, there's a lot of different things that go into working, you know, in a place like that that you don't always get in a schoolhouse. So it's pretty cool that you're kind of merging those two things together. And the apprenticeship is, is a three-year apprenticeship program, you said? Three-year apprenticeship program, exactly, yeah. So after their 12 weeks doing like the, the real intense training, how does it work after those 12 weeks? So they're assigned a different area of the production facility and they'll be working out there and learning the ropes and um, I think it's a pretty good immersive experience to still be learning and understand that you're an apprentice so you're not expected to, you know, be a journeyman, but you're also out there meeting people and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, learning what the day-to-day right. -day is going to be like. Yeah, it's like a mentorship program exactly. once you kind of leave the schoolhouse. It's like school and an internship and you're not you're not paying for it. Yeah, that's amazing. You're getting paid to do it. Exactly. Yeah, so, in fact. yeah. so the jobs out there do exist that you can get paid to learn, okay? So, Matt, is this it for me? Is this all, all you've got for me? Almost, almost the end of the road. I thought before you left, you might want to go over there and try your uh, skills versus our apprentice. Absolutely, I would love that. Let's that's go good. do it. Casey, they sent me over here so that you could show me what you're doing here with the oxy fuel cutting. Yeah. Um, First of all, how did you get into this? Um, well, my dad told me I should get into welding school because I'm very hands-on and creative. Uh -huh. I was kind of all over the place after I graduated high school. I took a gap year, I went for nursing, and I was like, this isn't for Not me. for you. So, so you landed on welding. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> so I was nannying, actually, and I just started taking classes over at Delaware County Community College. Uh -huh. And I was on Indeed one night just looking, and this popped up, and I was like, wow, that looks like a really good opportunity. Uh -huh. I read into it and I applied. And here you are. And here I am. And are you enjoying it so far? What, you're yeah. four days in? Yeah, it's awesome. It's different. Yeah. I mean, I've never been in an environment like this other than school. Yeah, That's welcome to the welding club. It's a, it's a pretty rad group to be a part of. And yeah. now let's go do some oxy fuel cutting. Casey, that was a whole lot of fun. Thank you so much for showing me what you learned. I hope you might have learned something too. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, good luck with everything. Thank you so much. All right, see ya. Take care. You too. So we're here at the end of the dry dock, and uh, this is where the ship will eventually leave. And just like that ship, you don't have to go home, but you can not stay here. So it's nice having you. All right, well, thanks a lot, Matt. I appreciate it. It was a blast. We'll see you next time on Metal America.